Hello again, I am Blunty, and this morning I was sleeplessly scrolling through the initial wave of CES 2024 announcements, reveals, press releases, and clickbait speculative horse plop articles, and my eye caught on a few headlines that claimed that Samsung has unveiled a new glasses-free 3D monitor. And 3D monitors of this kind aren't new, I wasn't that interested, we've had them in various forms for quite some time now, and the one that Samsung has unveiled shares a lot of the bones with what most consumers first experienced on the Nintendo 3DS and new 3DS respectively many, many years ago. Don't figure out how many years ago it was, you'll feel quite old quite quickly. So my question to you is, do you want a giant 3DS style monitor on your PC? What would you even use it for? How much of a premium would you pay? Let me know on the down below. Don't forget it's Samsung, so don't uh, underestimate how much of a premium they're gonna stack on top of that cost. But specifically, what made me stop and read deeper into it was something I had retweeted into my feed by someone I follow for keeping an eye on VR related stuff. The tweet was from some dude named James, whose Twitter bio claims he's taking a break from Twitter. That's not going that well. James claimed, Samsung's new 3D monitor allows you to play VR games without a VR headset. This is either genius or profoundly stupid. Now, I figured this was James desperately misunderstanding the experiential difference between VR and a simple flat lenticular 3D display. But it was a weird enough statement that it made me stop and click through a few articles to figure out where he got this from, where he's getting this, this idea from that it's, this 3D screen is for VR. So I clicked through several articles about it. Most were not much more than copy-pasting Samsung's press release stuff without any editing at all. But two of them from the six that I looked at also contained the exact same sentence written without attribution, without quotes, but it said, it is compatible with Steam VR, and Samsung is also securing 3D gaming content partnerships with notable gaming publishers. Now, Despite neither publisher actually attributing it, uh, the identical wording they use tells me they just copy pasted this right from Samsung's own press release and called it an article. Something woefully common in today's tech journalism spaces and it drives me absolutely batty. If you don't want to be a writer, why, why, why'd you pick that as a job? But hey, turns out James was doing fine. He's on the money. He was just saying what Samsung was saying. And he's right. It's anywhere between clever and astonishingly dumb. So let's hit the main bullet points from the press release. So we have some context for the hardware we're going to be talking about here. The Samsung 2D slash 3D gaming monitor allows users to enjoy 3D slash VR content without any wearable accessories. So glasses free 3D screen, in other words, nothing new. With eye and head tracking, the 3D mode can analyze your position and gaze in real time, optimizing three dimensional effects and ultimately providing an immersive gaming experience. Beyond 3D gaming, the monitor is compatible with existing VR games, experiences, and content. Users can now enjoy VR without the need to wear uncomfortable gear. It is compatible with Steam VR. And Samsung is also securing 3D gaming content partnerships with notable gaming. So let's start with the hand and eye tracking. Nintendo did this trick kind of on the new 3DS, which used its front facing camera to track your face so it could automatically adjust the settings on its lenticular 3D panel. And it worked surprisingly well, like really well. The new 3DS had a much more satisfying and consistent 3D experience than the original models. But the take home is it does work and it works well. And Samsung have doubled up using both head and eye tracking. I expect it will be a very convincing effect and very consistent. But now the meat. Users can now enjoy VR without the need to wear uncomfortable gear. Firstly, today's VR gear is far from uncomfortable. Many VR enthusiasts spend hours every day in VR just fine. Just a few weeks ago, I spent eight straight hours in VR while testing a huge battery pack for my Quest 3, and I suffered zero discomfort after that session, aside from tired eyes, from staring at screens without a break for eight hours. But you know, same thing happens with regular screens too, doesn't it? That's why they tell you to take a break. Secondly, Claiming that it can be a replacement for VR headsets, like you can do this instead of wearing a VR headset, is it's just a monumental misunderstanding of what VR even is and what it is great at. So yeah, it's totally possible to present a game that is otherwise VR focused on a flat screen. That's how YouTubers and the like even record stuff to show you here on, on YouTube for a start. And we've been doing that for 
a decade or more, it's easy. And you can also use a 3D screen to present a depth correct presentation of a viewport from the VR render in the same exact way, but it will not be the entire field of view. And again, this is also something VR content creators have, have managed with for many, 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 many years now. We know it well. A standard 16 by 9 video recording does not capture everything you see in VR, especially the vertical field of view is severely cropped. So you have to be really careful when you're filming a first person perspective in VR where you're actually looking if you want other people to see and the video you're recording, what, what you want them to see. Focus of what you're recording can't be too high or too low, otherwise it just won't be in your recording. So you're not getting anywhere close to the immersion simply because of that already, whether or not it's a 3D screen. Next, VR at bare minimum uses three degrees of freedom or three DOF. You can look around in a natural and intuitive way. Almost all VR these days, with the exception of pre-recorded video content, is six off. So your head pan and tilt and your are all tracked and also your relative position in 3D dimensional space. Woo! And, <laughs> and a 3D monitor cannot do this. Even if you use the camera on it to pan or tilt the camera view, if you sort of tilt or move your head, which can be done. There used to be specialist products like this you wear on your head and infrared trackers and stuff for racing sims and, and like Euro truck sim, very popular in that community uh, years ago, before the advent of good VR at a consumer level. But you still got to stay looking straight forward because that's where the screen is. You're just using your head motion to move the view. So you want to turn the camera, you do this and you look out the side of your eye. It's, it's, it's nothing like VR. In VR, in a, in a flight sim or a car race, for example, you'd turn to look at, you know, what's beside you or someone coming past you in the race and, and you just look out the window. It's superb. It's brilliant for immersion. So no, even if you run a VR game on a 3D monitor, it's still an inherently severely restricted and diminished experience by comparison. And that's to say nothing of the hand or sixed off controller tracking, where you use natural hand gestures and movements to interact with stuff. You grab it, you throw it, you poke it, you... What, you no. On a 3D monitor, you're mostly using a controller or a mouse and keyboard to move around and manipulate things. Maybe some air swiping gestures, if they use that camera to try to track your hands as well, as you can page to the next page by swiping in the air and all that kind of crap. No matter how clever they get with any of that, it's still going to be a, a, a shadow of the VR experience. But just because this 3D screen is not in any way a decent replacement for real VR, doesn't make it stupid necessarily. It is very interesting that it is compatible with Steam VR, for example, which does open up a lot of 3D content possibilities. I also found it absolutely unsurprising that Samsung is also securing 3D gaming content partnerships with notable gaming publishers. Because word on the ground has been for a while now, Samsung are working with Google on a new standalone VR headset in the vein of the Meta Quest or the Pico or possibly even an Apple Vision Pro competitor. So I already assumed Samsung and Google were already actively seeking content partners to support that hardware. And that is where the 3D monitor gets interesting at last, because aside from the true VR stuff, active interactive experiences in games and social platforms and such, we are, and I've already spoken about my predictions on this matter, so this video here if you missed it, but we're about to see a surge in 3D passive content being pushed to consumers. With Apple Vision Pro's superb screens and Apple's heavy focus on entertainment and 3D movies already being newly listed on the Apple TV app, we are about to see a new push for 3D movie and TV content. And with Apple also pushing homemade 3D video, or as they call it, spatial video, with the latest iPhones being a point and shoot 3D camera essentially, and a plethora of 3D and VR cameras already out there and have been for years, very consumer friendly stuff sometimes, sometimes not so much. And with giants like Apple and Samsung and Google and Meta all pushing into this space, there is going to be a need for easier, more intuitive, more representative ways to edit and produce this content for these devices and editing 3d video on a 3d screen is a way more attractive option than editing video in a vr environment and would mean a very minimal workflow change for people already making 2d content so yeah super dumb product if you're trying to pretend you're getting a vr experience out of it even if it does tell steam vr that it's oh well, actually I'm, I'm a really true vr compatible device put vr on me 
But it's a real nice product if you want to passively watch 3D stuff, and a super interesting product if you are or want to be actively producing 3D content for this new wave of VR stuff without changing your whole entire established, comfortable, and efficient workflow patterns that you already use for your content. And you can probably safely bet that Samsung are not going to be the only option out there uh, with these 3D lenticular head tracking uh, fancy new 3D panels that are evolution of the stuff we've had around for ages now because, well, now there is a need for them. Beyond just passive entertainment, there is a proper workspace need. Or at the very least, a desire to have a 3D workspace in order to more easily produce 3D content in a way that feels natural and instinctive and you can sort of see the result immediately. You don't have to edit it and produce it and put, the, put on the headset and then check everything looks all right. Nope, have to fix that. Put off the headset, don't fix it. No, just all on one screen. It's very attractive to me. But in any case, thank you very much for watching. Thank you as always to the patrons scrolling up above there. I am Blunty. I will catch you next time. Don't forget to subscribe and bell. And please, for the love of God, leave a comment because, I don't know, more people are watching on mobile and less, 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 less comments. That just for some reason, mobile people don't leave comments. Prove me wrong, I dare you. <laughs> Reverse psychology.